In this video, I'm going to show you how to assign inputs on the IV3. I am currently connected to a self-contained model, the IV3 500 CA. First, we're gonna start by going into the IO settings. For the self-contained model, you will have three inputs and three wires that are configurable between an input or an output. In order to change how you use these configurable wires, simply go to IO mapping. Here you can select if you want to use all three for an output, all three for an input, or perhaps a combination of the two. I'm going to select all three for an input function and hit OK. So now you can see I have a maximum of six inputs for this self-contained model. And when you hit the dropdown for each input separately, you can see the available functions. For input one, the two functions are external trigger rising or external trigger falling. The default will always be external trigger rising. Next for input two, you can see I have several more options here. By default, it will be off. However, if I want to use these inputs to change programs, I have up to six program bits to choose from and if you're wondering how to use these program bits, please see the video which talks about program switching via external input. I also have a clear error input, which can be used to clear errors such as an external master image registration error, a trigger error, or other types. The clear error input can also be used to reset the status output or your judgment value. You can also use it as an external master save, which means when, I, when you apply an input, it will take a new master image for your program. This can be good for making that change on the fly as the line is running. And then finally, I have an SD card save stop input, which means when this is input, it will stop saving to my SD card. As you can see, the options for input three through input six are all the same. So you can select however you want to be using those from these drop down menus. The next thing to note under the input settings are the options here. So the program switching method, again, if you are going to be switching programs via external input, just make sure to select that here. I'm not going to be doing that in this case, so I'll just back out. There's also the setting for write to ROM when using external master save. So this you can either enable or disable, but if you are using that external master save input and you want to be able to save those images or use them even after a power cycle, you would want to enable this function here. Next, you have internal trigger control with input one line. This, again, you just enable or disable. And if this is enabled, when a signal is applied to input one, the IV3 is able to act as an internal trigger and trigger at a set interval until that input is dropped. Lastly, you have reset status output on a clear error execution. If you enable this function, the status output will be cleared upon the input of this clear error. And this can be helpful for clearing the judgment after a set amount of time for your process. So this tab sums up how to assign the input function for your IV3. The last thing to note is this IO monitor tab, which can be really useful for troubleshooting purposes. If you apply your signal to an input line, you should see this light come on, verifying that the IV3 is seeing a signal. Before I mentioned, I was using a self-contained IV3. However, if you are using the separate head and amplifier model, the IV3G, here is the wiring diagram for the IO. As you can see, you have input one through input eight, so you get two additional inputs. The functions and how you enable them are the exact same process as what I just showed with the self-contained model. 
note that you have additional inputs and outputs that you can use with the compact model. I hope this video helped explain how to assign the inputs on the IV3, but if you have any additional questions, please give our tech team a call at 888-KIANTS-OPTION-2 for tech support. Thanks and have a great day.